This video is about the Materials API, which is a way that you can write computer programs to download data from a materials project without explicitly visiting the website. The Materials API is based on something called REST, which is an industry standard for exposing a data resource over the web. There's a link to a paper on the bottom of the screen. And in addition, there's some more technical documentation when you click Documentation and then API. So this contains some of the more technical details about how to use the REST API and what sorts of properties are available. Again, for now, we're going to focus on more of the practical aspects of how to use the Materials Project API. So the best place to start is this API link. And here there's just a smaller amount of information that tells you how the API works and how to get started. The first thing that you need is an API key, as it mentions over here. Now, by default, when you first sign in, you might not have an API key. So it tells you in order to get one, you need to go to your dashboard and click Generate API Key. So either I can click this link over here, or I can go to my dashboard here and click the button Generate API Key. So now I can see that I have an API key, and I'm going to go back to the API page. Okay, so now that I have an API key, the next thing I need to know is a little bit about how REST URLs work. Basically, the way a typical web page works is that when you go to a URL, it returns back HTML and CSS, uh, and your browser renders that into a visible web page. The way that a REST API works is that when you visit a URL, what the server returns back is not a visible web page, but rather machine-readable data in some structured format like JSON or XML. And then the idea is that you would write a computer program that visits this URL, and the server again returns back this machine-readable data, and then your computer program parses that data in order to do useful uh, work. So for example, here's an example of a URL that instead of returning HTML, will actually return back data in a machine-readable format. So let me try going to this link. It's actually not going to work, and we'll talk about why. And then we'll make it work by adding um, our API key. So let's go to this link. OK, so I've gone to this web page. And again, it returns back data in a machine-readable format, which is JSON. And this just tells me that in JSON language, this is not a valid uh, this is not a valid return code because the API key was not supplied. So if I try to visit this URL, which you can tell is trying to get the vast computed properties of the FE203 compound, I'm getting an error. The way to fix this error is to supply my API key, which identifies me and says I'm the one trying to get this data. So further down in this page, the same link that's listed here is um, visited by using your API key as well. So here's that same link, and here I put in the question mark, which is a get parameter, the API key, and this is my API key over here. So if you can write a program that visits this URL, puts a question mark, and puts your API key, you will actually get back this JSON response from your program. Your program can then parse this response using a JSON parser and then do any sort of uh, post analysis that you want on the FE203 compound. Now let's say you want to get the properties of a different compound. You just need to change your URL, for example, to FEO. And now I get back the properties of FEO in a machine readable format. So you can imagine how you would write programs in any programming language that can visit this, these types of URLs, get back data, and then process this data in a way that's useful to you. Again, the complete details of the types of URLs that you can visit and the types of properties you can get by changing these different types of URLs are in the technical documentation. Now, although one of the purposes of a REST interface is to be agnostic to the programming languages so that you can write a program in R or in Python or in Java, and it doesn't matter, you can just visit the URL and get back the data, uh, what I would recommend is actually using the PyMatGen library in order to access the REST interface. 
If you use PyMatGen, you actually don't need to know the details of how these REST URLs are constructed. You just have to know how to use one object called mprester, which contains lots of convenience functions uh, that help you use the REST interface. So in order to use PyMatGen, the first thing you need to do is to download the PyMatGen code base and install it. And all the details of downloading and installing is down here in this PyMatGen link. So if you visit pymatgen.org, there's a lot of documentation, uh, why you should use it, etc. And then there's installation instructions over here that you can follow. Once you've installed pymatgen, there's the issue of, well, how do you actually use pymatgen in order to use the REST API? So probably the best thing to do is to learn from examples. And there's some examples on pymatgen and the REST API at gist.github.com. So if I go to gist.github.com and I search for the object that PyMatGen uses to connect to the REST interface, mprester, I see that there's 12 results for mprester. So the 12 people have contributed code snippets at gist.github.com on how to use mprester. This one is about plotting out a band structure using a, a materials project ID. This one is about using a Fireworks VAST code base. This one will create VAST inputs for an MP structure. So given a materials ID, it'll actually create uh, in-car, pot-car, etc. This one will create a phase diagram, for example, a calcium carbonate phase diagram. And again, all you have to provide is your API key. So let's pick one of these examples. Uh, and again, there's a lot of things that you can explore. I'll just pick this first example here and see if we can plot a band structure using the PyMatGen code. So I'll view this code, and I'll copy it. So let's just go over this code really quick. Um, first, they're just importing a bunch of libraries that are programmed in PyMatGen. The first thing you want to do is put in your API key where it says mappy key. So if you don't put in your API key, it won't work, just like that URL didn't work without your API key. The next thing you want to do is to put the ID of the compound for which you want to plot the band structure. So MP19017 happens to be lithium iron phosphate. This is how the code is actually accessing the REST interface. This MP rester object will take in your API key. Then this, rest, this rester object has several convenience methods that allow you to get back data without knowing all the details of the URL structure. For example, this get band structure by material ID method of mprester will actually return an entire band structure object of a material. And again, you don't need to know exactly what URLs it's visiting in order to do that. There's also a lot more methods in mprester. For example, you can get a list of materials that match a certain constraint. You can get lots of different properties about each material. Uh, you can get object representations of uh, material properties that you can do further analysis on. So the way to learn about all those things is to look at the documentation and all the functions for mprester in PyMatGen. But again, we're going to start with just this one example, which gets the band structure. And it's, again, it's all built in into mprester of the materials ID, which is mp19017. Then we're going to use other functions in PyMatGen, which can actually get the band gap of a band structure object returned by mprester and also something in PyMatGen which can plot band structure objects. So just in a few lines of code, we're going to retrieve something from the materials project database. Uh, we're going to print out information from analyzing that band structure object, and then finally we're going to plot it. So here I'm going to copy the relevant lines of code. The stuff above is just comments. So let me create a Python file where I can paste this code. All right, so I've gone ahead and pasted this code, and now let me run it. Okay, so you can see that it actually didn't work, and the reason it didn't work is that I didn't put in my API key. Uh, so let me edit this file again, and here where it says mappy key, I'm going to put quotes, because Python expects strings to be in quotes. Now I have to find my API key, which is on the Materials Project web page. So go to Materials Project. Go 
go to my dashboard which contains my API key. I'm going to copy this key and supply it to the code. So now the code actually knows my API key and can connect. So I'm going to run, I'm going to clear this and I'm going to run the code again. So using the API key, it's retrieving the band structure object of MP19017 from Materials Project. Here it's analyzed um, the band gap energy and also the transition. So which uh, K point that the band gap is uh, transitioning between. It's an indirect band gap. And now it's actually running the plotting code using matplotlib to plot the band structure. So here's a band structure plot. And all of this happened in about four or five lines of code. So again, the best way to learn how to use MP Raster is to look at the PyMyGen documentation. Uh, the gist.github.com had some examples. If you go to regular github.com and search for MP Raster, you'll also see some examples there as well. So if I go to GitHub and I search for MP Raster, uh, you'll get code. And you see examples from the community about things like how to get the band gap, uh, how to get SIFs, and uh, other things as well. So you can work from those examples. Now, it looks like a lot of people have pasted their API keys into their GitHub code. That's not something that you should do. You should treat your API key like a password. And in fact, I'm gonna change my API key uh, after this video that I just uh, put in this video. And uh, the way to do that, if you ever need to change your key, is to go to Materials Project, dashboard and then just hit generate API key again and that will give you uh, a new key. So just in summary, the way that the REST interface and the materials project interface works is URLs point to data and uh, depending on the format of the URL, it tells you what compound and what type of data is going to be returned back to you. And you have to supply your API key along with the URL that says this is the data that I want to get. And the PyMatchN code has an object called MPRester that you just have to give your API key to. And if you do that, you get all these convenience methods that give you things like a band structure or let you query for all materials that uh, meet a certain property. So hopefully with that, you can get started with the MPRest API.